Welcome to Chess Adventures. I am in the middle of planning the Tour de Mont Blanc in 2025. And I thought now would be a good time to give you an update on how that planning process is going and maybe it'll help somebody out there putting similar plans together. I've learned a lot in the last month and I have to say it's been a little frustrating initially but I'm finally feeling like I've connected with the right resources that I can actually make this happen. In this video, I will go through some of the resources that I found to help me get this process going. The plan is to do this self-guided without having to pay a company to put the itinerary together for us or to set up the accommodations. Now, what resources have I found to help me along the way. So one of the key ones initially, at least for me, was looking at some of the YouTube videos that are already out on the Tour de Mont Blanc. It gives you a feel for the scenery that you're gonna see. It gives you an idea of maybe why you might not wanna stay in some of the refuges or specific ones. And it just, uh, just gives you a feel for how people are enjoying the trail and what types of things they're doing to get themselves over those miles. The other thing that I have found is that there's a Facebook group called Tour de Mont Blanc that has very, very, very good information. People actually come back on there after they complete their hikes and give a summary of the things that they did along their, the way and some of the things that they would suggest you might want to avoid so that you don't run into some of the issues that might they might have run into. So if you get a chance, sign up for that group. And even if you're not doing it next year, or maybe the year after, start paying attention to what's going on in the group and the information that's there. There's a ton of information and I still need to go back through some of the things that I saved as well as just do some searches and see what comes up. Now for the in your hand type of resources, I found three books <laughs> that I am using and I like them for different reasons. The first one is the Tour de Mont Blanc by Andrew McCluggage. What I like about this one is that it has broken the trail down into 11 stages. And there are variants that you can do, which are usually a little bit tougher uh, sections uh, that you can do, which typically give you better scenery, most of them. But uh, what I like about this book is it goes into some pretty good detail of what those sections are of the trail for those stages. And it also gives you the variants and gives you a description of what those variants are like. So, and some of them, a lot of those, they do suggest you have good weather for. So really know what you're doing when it comes to the variants. But this book is really good about that. And the other thing it has in here is the different places that you can stay. It's got contact information, how many beds are there. So um, it gives you, and what stages those accommodations are in. And the other thing it does, it gives you itineraries or possible itineraries for doing the Tour de Mont Blanc. So it's got seven days, eight days, nine days, 10 days, and 11 days. We're gonna be doing something like the 11 day, but we're gonna put a rest day in there. And my goal and the reason I wanna do 11 days is because I wanna do some of those variants that this book really talks a lot about. The other book that I like is this Tour de Mont Blanc by Jim Manthrop. It is uh, made or published by Trailblazer. But what I like about this one is a lot of information on transportation. <laughs> they do have um, a table in here that talks about the different transportations you can take. They have um, really detailed information on the different sections so um, and maps and then like if you're hiking it it might give you a pointer so if you're going past this area make sure you look at the glacier that's off in the distance or 
things like that. So and it's very uh, illustrative of um, the trail of what you're going to see. So I like this one. It um, also gives you an idea if you're going to go up or down for that section. Um, anyway, these are very good and it also talks about those variants. So this one I have found to be very helpful. The other thing I like about this one is this map at the back. It gives you a little bit more uh, detail on the different towns that are near there, which will come in pretty handy if you can't get the accommodations that are right on trail. So anyway, I like this one. The one that I haven't gotten into too much yet is the Tour of Mont Blanc, and this is by Cicerone um, Publishing, and Kev Reynolds is the one that has this. Um, it's the author for this. It does give you the trail in the clockwise, as well as the counterclockwise direction. And the other thing it does, it has a map, which should be a very good map to take, um, on the trail as a backup to your phone. So I'm not sure what you're gonna use on the trail, but there's a lot of different apps you can use. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So those are the in my hands, things that I can touch and feel. And you can see that <laughs> this one has already got kinks and um, already beaten up. <laughs> so I've been using it a lot. The other resource that is out there is the websites and different blogs. So those are written summaries from people that are online. And the one I want to recommend is a blog by a person called Mags, M-A-G-S. Her website is tourdumontblanchike.com. This website has so much good information. She has a lot of information in here, and there are different itineraries where you can get information. As an example, um, the one for, oh, she's got four, four and a half, eight days. Anyway, we want the 11 day one, uh, at least for what I'm doing. And you can go in and you can view it, and then she goes in and breaks down all the places you would be going along the way and what days. And then she gives you a description of what you can expect. How many hours it might take, how, many, how much distance, how many um, elevation feet or meters that you're going to go up or down. And ways that you can uh, maybe shave off some time if you want. Um, for example, this Bellevue cable car, you know, if you want to have a lunch stop where you might do that and what your accommodations might be. And she also gives you pointers if you are, there's places to see along the way uh, where you might want to stop. And I forgot to mention this earlier, a online place that you reserve your refuges and some of the hotels at you're going to want to be familiar with this website. It's the www.montourdumontblanc.com and you can then click on any of the refuges that you're thinking about staying at and it will give you information as far as um, what you can expect if it's uh, got any openings and um, you can see that all the huts are basically closed after the middle of September but you can uh, gives you a description of the refuge and it gives you the rates so these will get updated for 2025 and any basic information you'll need to know um, once you're there so this is how you would actually reserve some of the refuges that you're planning on staying at and like I said there are some hotels in here too Otherwise, you would have to go to their website. And the last thing I'll talk about is that I was struggling a little bit in the early on part of this, trying to figure out all the different ways you could put this trail together. 
And I'm telling you, there are so many different ways you can put this trail together because you have variants, because you have transportation, um, duh, because you have side trails everywhere, every which way, um, ton of different ways. And I was getting frustrated because I was initially trying to use far out and the distance between certain places and a spreadsheet, trying to figure out if I change this, how's that gonna impact my mileage for the day? Well, I have found something that works amazing. It is a planning app. It's called The Hiking Club. It does cost $80 or so. I'm gonna show you on my computer what it does. But in general, if you make a change or if you decide to take transportation, it will adjust your mileage, your elevation, gain and losses for that day. And they give you an, a sample itinerary to use. Uh, you just tell them which, how many days and they've got an itinerary, they'll send it to you and it's a good starting point. And you can create your own. You can have up to five different itineraries there. And when uh, yeah, everything is done and the schedules come in next year for the transportation schedules in the system, then everything will come together and then you'll be able to download and you can then use one of your uh, GPS apps or they have one that they recommend called the organic I'll put it up on the screen but I'm gonna try to figure that one out but you could use Gaia you could use your inReach GPS uh, tracking uh, to download this type of uh, information from the app into so that you can then use your itinerary your schedule of where you're planning on going all those losses and gains and elevation and mileage that you're doing and keep track of it as you're going. So I'm going to show you all that. This is the website. It's called www.app.thehiking.club. Once you pay them money for the app, you can download or begin to create your own itinerary. And you can see that I started to create one here. And this is the loop. You can expand on it to narrow in on places. You can see that I am starting at zero here in Chamonix, which is a town not too far from La Huche. But I'm going to be taking a bus, which is this right here, down to La Huche, which is right here. The one thing I do want to show you is how easy it is to change things on the map and then you'll see what the impact is of that change. Here's the route that I have identified right now for day one. I'm going to take the bus from um, Chamonix over to La Huche, and then I'm going to start walking off that bus right here in the town and start at the starting point, the La Huche trailhead. I'll walk a little ways and then there is the Bellevue cable car, which will take me up to the Col de Tricon variant. I am going to hopefully stay on this variant and take the trail into La Contamines, where we'll be staying for the night. Right now, I just listed a hotel. I'm not sure if that's where we're staying yet. We're still trying to figure that out. But what I want to show you is how easy it is to change different parts of this trail. Let's say you didn't want to take the Bellevue cable car. All you have to do is move this over. The red line is the main TMB hike, hiking trail. And notice how this will change. Now we would be doing 12.2 miles or 3 miles instead of the 8.3. And the elevation will change significantly. We'll put on a couple more thousand feet of elevation. Now again, if I wanted to change and do the main TMB route instead of the variant, then this is how it would change. Let's just say you wanted to hike the main one and not the variant. You're going to see this change. It'll be a little bit less miles because the variant adds on a little bit of miles and the elevation will be a little bit less because it's not as demanding as the variant. 
So I'm going to put this back. I want to take the cable car. If you don't want to take the variant, then you'll be doing almost 10 miles. And, and then we do want to take the variant, if at all possible, and that'll increase our elevation and decrease our mileage. One thing I did want to mention is there is a bit of a bottleneck down here in La Champe, uh, Shampoo, I don't know how you say it. Anyway, there's uh, basically two key places to stay. This one, and I'm not going to pronounce them, and then the Refuge de la Nova. And if you can't get in one of those, you're pretty much stuck with driving down on a bus down to Borg St. Maurice or taking a taxi. So those are some of the options. I do want to try to stay here at the Refuge de Matats. It is um, nice that you can click on these. You can either book right here, you can learn more about the accommodations, you click on it and you can find out some information on their website. But if you're booking, in this case, if you click the book here, it's going to take you to that main uh, TMB reservation website for all the refuges. And you can see they're going to be closed pretty much after or starting the 21st of September for the season. But in this case, there is a bed open. It says five beds in a small four bed dormitory. Yeah, you can either go in the dorm or you can actually stay in a bedroom with one bed and a shower at 240 euros. So yeah, that's kind of the one that I would want. <laughs> I would hit two and that's the place that I would want to stay here because I'm trying to avoid the dormitories. But this place gets booked pretty fast and hopefully it'll be open. If not, uh, we may end up being stuck somehow driving down into this um, other town or coming up with another plan. I forgot to mention one other resource that I am using and that is friends. <laughs> I met Jerry Parker on the long trail for the first time. And he is somebody that has hiked the Appalachian Trail and a ton of other trails. But he and his wife hiked the Tour de Mont Blanc this year. So he was kind enough to send me his itinerary. So I'm utilizing friends and friends of friends because Terry has some friends that have also gone. And let's wrap this video up. Hopefully the information I've presented so far is helpful in any of the planning you might be doing. I'll keep you informed as to how the planning goes. This next month is going to be pretty critical here in October. I'll get a feel for <laughs> whether or not I'll regret the decision of doing this on my own or not. So stay tuned. Only time will tell.